Shading is what gives your GFX life. Without it, your render can look flat, boring, and unfinished. Good shading adds depth and contrast and makes your characters really pop off the screen. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to shade properly inside of Photoshop or the free alternative Photo P. So let's get right into it. First things first, we need a selection of our character. This is because we don't actually want to be doing shading on like the background of our scene. I don't actually have a background right here, but for example, if you did have a background, you don't actually want to be doing shading on the background. This is because the reason we do shading is to just make the details and everything of our main focus point pop out a whole lot more. So to get a selection of our character, in my situation, I do actually already have my character in just a PNG layer. So I can just hold down control and then click on the little icon of the layer here. And as you're going to see, that gives us a selection of the character but if you just have one merge layer with the background and the character and everything you're gonna have to manually select it unless you use like crypto mats or something which i do have a whole video on crypto mats if you do want to check that out but to manually select it with our layer selected we're going to head over to these different selection tools up the top here the main one you're going to need is the object selection tool but of course there are all of these other selection tools if you do need to adjust your selection at all from here you can just draw a rectangle around your character and that's going to make a pretty decent selection of it from there we're going to add in a brand new layer and we're going to be clicking this little mask button right here and what that's going to do is take the selection we just made and turn it into a mask on our layer for those people who don't know how masks work let me just quickly explain if i just select my layer and start drawing you're going to see that it only applies to our character and that is because if i alt click on our mask here the white parts are the only parts that show and the black parts don't show you can of course select your mask and with like a white brush you can draw in where you want the mask to show and of course use black and then do the opposite it and hide it and now you're going to see our mask is completely messed up so don't do that but now i hope you kind of get the basic idea of how masks work but now that we've got this layer the next step is to go up to the blend type right here click it and change it to soft light now there's also overlay which the difference between these two is overlays a lot stronger and more contrasty while soft light is exactly that it's just soft the next step is to select your brush and we're going to mess around with the brush settings real quick so the first thing is to decrease the flow here what the flow does if it's set at 100% you're going to see you're going to get these thick solid lines you want to turn down the flow to about 10% now you're going to see if I draw it's a lot softer but the difference between flow and opacity is with flow you can draw back and forth over top of it to make the drawing a lot thicker the next step is to go under your brush settings here and turn down the hardness all the way to zero that's just going to make your brush a lot softer so as you can see now if I just turn up the flow back to 100% you're going to see our brush is super soft after that is done you can also mess around with the scale of the brush if you need the sides of it but i do suggest learning the keybinds keybinds are super handy for speeding up your workflow in photoshop if i hold down Control alt and then hold down right click if i move my mouse left and right it increases the size of my brush and up and down increases and decreases the hardness of the brush so i want the hardness to be at zero and then we can just mess around with the diameter the size of it however we need so now you may be asking well how do i actually shade well with your soft light layer selected we're going to be simply going in to the darker parts like the shadows and stuff with a black brush and just drawing over top of them to make them a lot darker of course with the flow being low like it is uh it's not going super intense unless we keep drawing back and forth over it then it starts to get more intense you might also want to use the eraser tool with the hardness set to zero percent once again and the flow set to around 10 percent this will let you erase certain parts if you do need without erasing super harshly so you want to do all the different shadows and things even around the face so usually around about here you want to kind of get some more shading in there some around here uh, and usually have like a nice gradient have it go from darker and then to more brighter so something like that definitely looks a lot better and just like that after literally like three different lines you can now see it's looking a lot nicer but of course we're missing the highlights so you do want to switch colors you can switch between these two colors here by just clicking x on your keyboard or clicking this little arrow here the white is of course going to be the highlight so this is a highlight here these sort of brighter parts and definitely on the face so around about here i want it to be brighter and now you can see it's going from this nice dark color to more of a brighter one i don't want it to apply to the glasses i want to make the glasses a little bit darker but there we go uh you can see now if i disable it and enable it it's just giving a nice gradient i guess so that's really it you just want to make the darker parts darker and the brighter highlights more bright and shading is really something where you decide how long you want to spend on it you can just go on with a pretty big brush and just draw in a few different lines and things and you know you're done or you can really go detailed to every little crack and everything and, and just make it super detailed it's really up to you and now some of you may be asking well what's the difference between 
between this tutorial I just watched and your last shading tutorial you did a few months ago. Well, first of all, I didn't jump to you guys with an ear piercingly loud intro like I did in that video. Hey everyone, welcome back to GFX Run. But mainly, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do more colored shading because you don't always have to use black and white in your brush. Now, setting your layer to overlay, obviously, as you can see, makes the shadows and everything super just over exaggerated. It looks like a bruise now. It looks like he's whacked his chin on something. But what it does do really nice is use colors really well. So if I do like a blue here, like a brighter blue sort of color and start to draw that in, you're going to see just like that, we got this super nice blue coming around the arm. So that's how overlay can be used. But just clearing my layer here, I want to talk about mainly colored shading on the skin. So we're going to hold down Alt to grab the eyedropper and just grab the color of our skin. For the bright brush, I usually set it, you know, just to a brighter sort of orange. Usually I'll just use white though. And then for our dark brush, we're going to grab the same color, but we're going to turn it all the way down to like a dark brown. So as you can see now, we've got like a brown brush. That's just giving our shading we do, especially on the face, just a little bit of color. You can even increase it a little bit more. You can mess around with where you want it on here, but about there should work pretty good. You can then start to just draw that in and you're going to see that the shading now isn't just so dull. It's got a bit more color to it. Now you are going to see that it is also actually applying to the shirt there as well as like the glasses and stuff. That's why I'll usually make a selection of just like the skin on both the hands and the head and everything and make that the mask on its own separate layer. So I'll have like one layer for shading on the clothes and one layer for shading on the skin. But you can see if you just ignore the glasses and like the uh, shirt a little bit, you can see the like colors here are just looking a whole lot nicer. It's just popping out a whole lot more. In fact, there we go. I did just go ahead and erase it on the glasses and around the the shirt there so now we've just got shading on the skin and you can see that although it isn't quite perfect it just does look a whole lot nicer compared to if i add like a black and white uh, adjustment layer here and apply it to only the shading this is what black and white shading looks like and this is what colored shading looks like it is kind of a slight difference and it's definitely a little bit too orange down here so maybe i do want to mess around with uh, what color brush i am actually using but you can see it is just making a lot more color pop out which can definitely look a whole lot nicer but usually for the clothes and everything still you do just want to use black and white but for things like this where i've got like a blue light coming to the side as i did before i can also use that um to make that brighter but it just doesn't look good so that's where as i said before uh you can actually go ahead and use like an overlay layer with the same mask and everything to draw in more of that colored shading that's the thing you don't even have to do shading for like making the highlights brighter and the shadows darker you can literally do them for just making the colors pop more so if i wanted to make this yellow pop more i can do that if i want to make his hair more yellow i can grab the yellow sort of an orange color and just draw over top of it and you can see it just gets a whole lot more orange right i can do the same with the glasses if i want to make the glasses more purple select it draw over them and there we go even though it looks horrible you get the idea you can mess around with colors and everything so yeah as i said before you can combine both soft light and overlay layers to really get your final shading you can even experiment with different brushes and stuff for example i do have a few different brushes like i've got bob's brushes here uh which these are just like smoke brushes which as you can see um if i just add a new layer here and we just hide all that stuff you're going to see that this is actually like a smoke brush which this gives you this rough sort of shading so if i wanted to do shading around the cheeks here you can see now it's just making the shading a lot more random so it's not quite perfect it's you know it's got a few imperfections and stuff which that can definitely look very nice if done well I hope this video did help and I hope it wasn't too repetitive. I know it was pretty similar to the last video. I even used the same render, but I did just want to update it showing a bit more with colors and showing how to use masks and everything like that. By the way, this is like my fifth time recording this video. The other times just messed up, including one of the times I got so far into it and I just completely forgot to start recording. So I was just yapping to myself for 10 minutes. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to like, subscribe, join up the GFX Rhino Discord server, discord.gg.gfxrhino. Link in the description below. I'll see you all next time. Peace out.